Nice to see everybody. Alexei, thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure. And uh, you gave me a really interesting topic, so I hope I don't make it too boring, uh, but I've actually uh, found it very informative. Uh, the question is about oncologic node dissection. Is it treatment? Is it diagnosis? Is it just surgical tradition? This going. There we go. Um, so here's a critical question. How is is how you view lymph nodes? Uh, are these actually uh, uh, filters that trap cancer cells on their way to metastases, or are they just a marker for systemic disease and not really a way station? That's the critical question. These have been recognized since the 19th century um, as a, uh, this is an early paper on melanoma by Herbert Snow, and you can see. Uh, he puts it very succinctly that the nearest lymph glands intersect tumors for a time, but eventually the tumors escape these, these lymph glands and get into the bloodstream. Is that really what happens? In colorectal surgery, uh, all of our thinking has been informed by uh, Cuthbert Dukes, uh, whose famous classification uh, emphasized the orderly spread of colorectal cancer. All right, I hear a voice. Are you hearing me okay? I yeah, yes, yes. Okay, good. Great. Uh, um, uh, early spread, uh, an orderly spread of colorectal cancer from early uh, local lesions up through the lymph nodes to more extended lymph nodes and then to the liver. Uh, and this thing is very appealing, very simple, uh, but it forgets the basic anatomy that the lymph nodes are not, of course, leading to the liver. They're leading to the thoracic duct. The liver spread is hematogenous. And these things may go by parallel tracks. The interest in lymph nodes uh, got a boost in 2003 with this paper from Rich Swanson uh, in Boston, uh, showing that even in node negative patients, if you didn't resect enough lymph nodes, or at least if enough lymph nodes weren't examined, patients had a substantially worse prognosis. And this led to the standardization of the 12 node minimum uh, that we're all used to, uh, that in fact led surgeons and pathologists to find more nodes. As you can see on this slide, node counts went up uh, in the SEER database, but surprisingly, the number of patients who were upstaged was minimal. It really didn't change anything looking for all these different nodes. And around the same time, we began to understand that even though we were thinking as surgeons and pathologists as pathologists, we've got to do a better job, take out more nodes, examine the specimens better. Um, there's other factors involved with node counts alone, most predominantly T-stage, larger tumors, deeper tumors, uh, elicit more nodes. Old patients make less nodes, left-sided tumors make less, less nodes, and micro, uh, microsatellite unstable tumors make more nodes. So the message of this is that uh, it's not just the anatomic resection that you do as a surgeon or the evaluation the specimen pathologist does that dictates the node count. Again, uh, suggesting in some ways that this is more of the systemic marker theory. In our field of colorectal surgery, this is the landmark paper from Werner Hohenberger in Erlangen. Uh, he compares, it's, it's been incredibly impactful, and at the same time, time, I think there are a lot of problems with the paper. He compares two cohorts. Uh, the first one, uh, 1978 to 84, when he did so-called old-fashioned surgery. The second one, uh, when he developed his CME technique with high vascular ligation. You can see that his later cohort did better than the earlier cohort. Uh, to which he, he, and he attributes this all to his surgical technique. Uh, but in fact, a lot of things changed between the late 70s and early 80s in uh, the end of the uh, 20th century, uh, especially, uh, well, quality of surgery is his issue and quality of pathology, but his own experience, systemic things in the hospital, improved leak rates, less blood transfusion, uh, enhanced recovery, maybe just beginning, but especially chemotherapy. All of these could be responsible for the difference that he saw 
Uh, and it's a problem looking at retrospective data, as we all know. But this started a little bit of a new industry pathologically. This is a work from Nick West and Phil Quirk. Uh, Phil, of course, was instrumental in establishing TME for rectal cancer and the pathologic basis of that. They started to look at morphometry, uh, look at the specimens uh, that, are, um, uh, that are retrieved in measuring them. And in this study, they compared the specimens from Leeds where they work versus Professor Hohenberger's specimens. Uh, and they describe, uh, they posit or claim that the Erlangen results are better than the Leeds results. There are some data for that. Uh, and uh, they look at the differences and they show that the specimens are bigger, the distance to the tie is better, uh, they're more anatomic, and more lymph nodes are retrieved. But there's problems with this. This is another study from the same group where they, uh, they uh, state that the best resections come from Germany, Hohenberger's technique, or Japanese D3 resections. And when they compare the specimens, you see they're really very markedly different. So there's not really an indicator about what the critical part of the operation is that gives you uh, the best resection. What are the data that show improvement in CME? They're still, I think, remarkably weak. Uh, to me, this is probably the best study. This is uh, from, uh, from Denmark. Uh, it's two groups of patients. The blue line is the CME group, which does better than the red line, which is standard uh, surgery. But it's not a randomized trial. It's actually in the blue line. It's CME specialist surgeons at a CME specialist hospital. The other three hospitals are the regional colorectal cancer hospitals. But whether or not they're actually directly comparable, I think uh, there's some question about. And if you look at the, uh, the, the complications, again, this is the same group from Denmark, you can see that, uh, that there are strikingly more problems in the CME group. Uh, you look at the interop organ injury rate, very high. Severe sepsis, very high. We don't see these things. Respiratory failure for regular right colectomies, regular conventional resections. We don't see these complications at nearly this rate. Suggests there's a price to be paid for doing the more extended operations. And this is even in the group. These are the specialist surgeons of a significant experience doing uh, complete mesocolic excision. What about meta-analyses? So this is the most recent one that I could find, 2021. They all sort of repeat themselves. This one you can see, I, you can squeak out a significant statistically significant difference between uh, in disease-free survival, improved local recurrence, improved. But there's a real problem here. And the problem is, feedback, sorry. Uh, the problem is, is that Almost all of the studies in this are retrospective cohort studies. So I think the, the fundamental data are actually fairly weak. And you put them all together, you can show improved numbers. But I think we have to read these with some degree of caution. Now, what can we learn about from other cancers, which is maybe the meat of this talk with that background? Breast cancer. Uh, the end of the, uh, of the 19th century, Local recurrence, just like in our era for rectal cancer, was a gigantic problem. William Halstead uh, developed the modified, I'm sorry, developed the radical mastectomy and claimed the local recurrence rate dropped from over 50% to 6%. Very, very dramatic results. Um, I think actually thinking about it, maybe the same as Bill uh, Heald reported for rectal cancers, but very dramatic improvement. Some years later, Lewis and Reinhoff were pathologists at Hopkins. They looked at the data. Turned out they were not nearly as good as Halstead claimed. Uh, this, you know, is sort of a, a uh, common trend for initial reports. Everything really looks better. Then by the cool, clear light of day, uh, the results uh, tend to get a little bit worse for any new operation or medicine. Um, uh, but the local recurrence rate was at least 30 percent. A lot of patients died, presumably, of breast cancer. Dr. Halstead, 
thought we've got to stop the march of nodes. So this is the nodes as as gatekeepers protecting it, protecting the rest of the body. So for him, uh, we operate on the neck in every case. And in some cases, we should crack the mediastinum and get the internal mammary nodes. This is from my institution, University of Minnesota, Dr. Wangenstein. On the left, does, he's cleaned out the entire, uh, the breast, the chest wall, the, ax, the axilla, all picked clean. But on the right, for the super radical mastectomy, uh, you can see he's extended the dissection up into the neck, and a node dissection in the neck. He split the sternum. He's uh, taken the internal mammary nodes, and he believes, again, that he's going to stop the disease by getting the regional nodes. This became a sign of surgical manhood. So here's Dr. Urban from Sloan Kettering. Lesser surgery is done by lesser surgeons. Uh, there's a lot of psychology involved in that, if you ask me. Uh, but then the tide peaked and it began to ebb, and especially with Bernard Fisher and the NSBP, uh, NSABP. This is the study that showed that modified radical mastectomy was as good as radical, that lumpectomy and uh, radiation is good as modified radical. Uh, and importantly to our conversation, uh, that if you did sentinel node biopsies and found positive nodes, it didn't matter. It was not therapeutic to remove known positive nodes in the axilla in breast cancer. So breast cancer actually went full circle in some ways, from non-radical resection to radical mastectomy to super radical mastectomy, and then we climbed off the ledge. Modified radical mastectomy, lumpectomy with no dissection, lumpectomy without no dissection. And the question is really for colorectal cancer, is this gonna be our natural history as well? Melanoma, two important studies that came out within a few years of each other. Uh, New England Journal study, uh, 2017, the German study uh, in uh, 2019, both of these looking at the need to do uh, node dissections for sentinel node positive tumors. The answer is no. These uh, The survival curves are absolutely superimposable. You could not find closer curves. And let's look at the number. This is from uh, a New England Journal article. Let's look at these numbers in detail because I think they're very informative. Uh, uh, regional node recurrence, if you do a node dissection, that goes down very dramatically. We're seeing that in the current uh, rectal cancer literature. Disease-free survival also is better if you do the node dissection, of course, because of the difference in local recurrence. But here's the critical point. The melanoma-specific survival is totally unchanged whether or not you get a nodal recurrence, which suggests that the nodes, the nodal disease in the region are not metastasizing. And you can manage this with surveillance. And look at this. This is, again, I showed you with CME. Uh, the uh, lymphedema rate, uh, uh, significant morbidity. If you do a node dissection, a quarter of the patients have significant lymphedema. It's a real price to pay for this local excision which has not done anything to your survival. But we have to stop and think about that. Lateral node dissection. I know there's been a lot of discussion about this this morning. Forgive me for saying this, but uh, so this is the uh, Japanese randomized trial, the JCOG 0212, published five years ago. Uh, and it's a little bit of the same picture. The local recurrence rate is uh, dramatically different. Uh, if you add a node dissection, you cut that almost in half. The five-year recurrence-free survival is almost identically the same. So this does actually not, with that little squeak of 0.0547, does not uh, hit the inferiority margin. So according to this paper, uh, uh, the uh, lateral dissection is useful and helpful, but it's by the tiniest of margins. And the overall survival is not significantly different. And of course, uh, it may be improved in the robotic era, but traditionally uh, there are um, 
uh, there's additional morbidity to doing the node dissection. That's the concern, and especially for non-super specialists. So this study is all non-irradiated in the uh, traditional Japanese surgery, non-irradiated rectal cancers. What about on the age of radiation? Uh, uh, this is uh, Miranda Custer's. This is a multi-center retrospective cohort study looking at, uh, just as we were talking about uh, in the last discussion at the end, uh, short axis nodes greater than seven millimeters after radiation have an increased local recurrence rate uh, compared to ones that respond or aren't there, uh, but the survivals are not impacted with that. Finally, a quick second on gastric cancer, which informs, gives us just a little bit more information on this. Uh, this is the uh, Japanese, largely Japanese experience, which shows that the trend to get more and more radical, just like we looked at in breast cancer. Uh, and then again, we've sort of climbed off the edge. We've gone from periaortic node dissection, gastrectomy with resecting pancreas and spleen. Now uh, we've retreated from those. In the Western world, the big thing, is we've had a hard time replicating uh, the Asian results. The Dutch trial addressed this. When they published the results in uh, 2004, they showed increased morbidity and mortality by doing the more radical resection and no survival benefit. We wait another six years. At 15 years follow-up, the curves begin to, uh, to separate. Uh, it's, it's now a relatively smaller number of patients involved uh, actually. Uh, but again, there's substantially more morbidity when you do the more radical resection. So how do we put this all together? Uh, to me, it's that in many cases, uh, extended node, in many cancers, uh, doing an extended node dissection reduces the local recurrence rate, uh, but it's often at, the, at a cost in increased morbidity and mortality uh, in all the examples I showed. Um, if you look at melanoma, um, uh, or if you look at breast cancer, uh, even when there's positive nodes, removing them doesn't impact the overall survival. So these can be managed with close observation, adjuvant therapy, et cetera. Uh, and finally, I think there's still open questions. This is probably not a popular viewpoint about how useful it is to do complete mesocolic excisions for colon cancer. And I think it still remains to be proven that doing lateral node dissections after you've radiated rectal cancer is going to be the answer. So thank you for listening to me. I really appreciate the opportunity to participate. Nice to see everybody.